Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Unique Photo Superstore and another U event live. I'm here today with Olympus product managers, Rich, senior product manager, though I'm trying to figure out that whole senior thing going on, right? Because I'm supposed to be senior. <laughs> you can call me junior, right? Senior product manager, Mary. And we're here to discuss the new Olympus OMD EM5 Mark II. Okay, who can say that 10 times fast? Uh, maybe three we times fast. We can try. Yeah, three, can try, try three times fast. I've been working on it. Uh, we run these uh, live events here in the store frequently. Uh, we're really excited to have a new product like this available uh, to show to you today. Uh, I'm personally an Olympus fan. I, I know I get asked as the owner of the coolest camera store in New Jersey uh, what camera I shoot, and I do shoot Olympus a lot of the time. So uh, it's a camera that I'm familiar with. I actually had the um, EM5. Um, Mary, why don't you just give us a brief rundown of what changed between the EM5 and the EM5 Mark II? Yeah, so since the, since the original announcement of the M5 a couple of years ago, we've added a, a couple of really great features to it. Um, something that's very universally appealing to people is Wi-Fi. So we'll get that one right out of the bat, um, get that away. Um, using the Olympus OI Image Share app, you can remote control the, pho the camera from your phone, um, sh do uploads to share with your social media networks. So that's kind of one of those, kind of a given now within our OMD lineup. So now that that one's kind of out of the way, w we can wait, talk. Wait, be before you yeah. put it up, before you put it out of the way though, I want to say something about Wi-Fi because this yeah. to me is an issue that's really dear to my heart. I have been pounding the manufacturers in our industry and I'm telling them that the smartphone business is killing the camera business right. because of the connectivity issue. And then you started to see Wi-Fi introduced into cameras. Right. And I have to tell you that for those of you that have used Wi-Fi and cameras for the past few years, some of it's not so good. Right. Mm. You know, it's very, very awkward. I will tell you that on the EM10, Okay, I use the Wi-Fi at a marketing event out in California. And the Wi-Fi app, I use an Android phone. Uh, the Wi-Fi app worked phenomenally. I love the way it just connected and disconnected because, you know, you're like inside a hotel room and you want your phone to stay on the Wi-Fi except, you know, the internet Wi-Fi, except right. when you want to connect to the camera. And it connected very easily up and back. And as a result, I was the social media king of the entire marketing event because I was able to take pictures with a professional camera on the stage where the lighting was tricky and right. really it really really worked well so kudos to that i assume in the em5 mark ii we're going to see you know that or the even better uh, version of the wi-fi yeah absolutely so there's a brand new version of the oi share app that's um available very soon on both for both apple products and for Android. I think mine called for an update last night, by the way. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Um, so that's just one of the many, many features kind of coming into this camera. A big thing that kind of came with the M5 um, original and is now still in the M5 Mark II is this five axis image stabilization, which is really the cornerstone of the technology of this piece. Right. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with that, it means that you can compensate for movement across five different planes of, of movement. Um, so you get really super sharp handheld right. images right. all the time. And you'll see that that plays into two other really big pieces of this camera. One is um, video shooting, which has been significantly improved versus the EM5. Um, and then secondly, we have this new technology called 40 meg high res shot, both of those which rely really heavily on the image stabilization Sta right. unit. That's right. And, and ha having a u being a user of the camera, I will tell you that the image stabilization works great. We should say, obviously, in your camera, the image stabilization, Rich, is located where in the camera? It's in the body. Right, in the body of the camera, yeah. which, of course, leads to what with the lenses, would you say? Nice and small, right? Yes. It's, it's actually, it's in the body. It's packaged with the sensor and also the supersonic wave filter, which is our, our dust reduction method, which is... Proven, works great, change lenses in any, any type of situation without worry. Right. One of the things, you know, and sort of speaking about lenses, because, you know, we put a lot of lenses out on the table. We'll get back to the camera in a sec, is I see that you have a new lens on that camera. Tell me about it. Yes. Um, I'd like to tell you about it. I actually, my focus at Olympus is on the lens business. This is our updated version of our 14 to 150 lens. This lens has been out in the marketplace since about 2010. It's an all-around lens, so it's it's like I call it, you know, the best travel lens because it's going to affect the focal length of 28 to 300. And the big update on this one is it's now weatherproof. So it's now compatible for, to you know, with any of our weatherproof bodies, take it out anywhere, rain, snow, dusty condition. We've also updated the coatings. 
on this lens. All the right. elements now have our exclusive zero coating, which is a extra ro low reflective type coating, which is very important, not just on the front of the lens, but also within the lens. And what's too. the advantage of that coating? It re basically reduces reflection. Got and it. again, even inside the lens, you know, you, you have to control unwanted stray reflection. You know, you do that by having the edges of the elements coated with black paint and so on and so forth. But the actual coatings on the lens themselves are, are you know, your primary defense against unwanted uh, aberration from reflection. Right. And I know you have a couple of weatherproof lenses out here, right? We have the new lens right here. This is... The, the, the 40, 40 to 150. 150. What's yes. the I'm sorry. What's the aperture range on that lens? This is an f4 to an f5.6 lens. Right. Yeah. And this, and then you have the, and then talk about this lens now. This is a 40 to 150. Yeah, that's our 40 to 150 Pro lens. That was the second Pro lens in our lineup. We introduced that guy and uh, announced it last September. Started shipping that right before the holiday season. It's a fixed aperture, f2.8. Right. Also, so wait, wait, let's stop a sec. So that's an f2.8 lens. And for me, one of the things that I always hear, you run a camera store, we have all the other vendors in here. We've got the N vendor and the C vendor and the P vendor and the S vendor and all of that stuff. And one of the knocks against Olympus for quite a while was that you didn't really have the right setup to do sport shooting. And I know we're going to get to some of the features of the EM5 Mark II in terms of sport shooting and action shooting. But this lens, so someone may look at this lens and say, well, this is, you know, a large lens. But this has a 35 millimeter equivalent of 80 to 300, right, at a fixed f.28 aperture, right? So to me, this is a very, very special lens. I don't think anybody makes a lens like this, and it's weatherproof. Uh, certainly not at that size. Certainly not and at that um, size, right? With the type of AF speed we can achieve with right. that lens. Right, and, and also as a companion lens to that, right, we have the 12 to 40 fixed 2.8, right, yes. which is a 24 to 80. And then we have a 60 millimeter 2.8 macro, right? This is weatherproof, right? That's Absolutely. weatherproof as well. Peter, your boss, Peter, just told me that this thing is weatherproof, right? Presently, we've got right. five in the lineup Go that ahead. are weatherproof. But, you know, I know you've also seen our roadmap. We've right. actually, you know, been public about where we're going with our pro lens lineup. And we've actually got three more that we expect to see in 2015. An 8 millimeter fisheye, a 7 to 14, 2 8, and a 300 F4. You know, obviously, there, you know, there are, ma there, there are companies in the business that have you know, what are considered the leaders in the industry. But what's always remarkable to me is what a technology-oriented company you are. So when I start to hear you talk about that, people don't realize that Olympus is really a technology company and you've built all of these amazing features into the cameras. It's really, really uh, impressive, right? Very, very impressive. Absolutely. I mean, our, our core heritage is optical technology, starting with microscopes back in like the 19. 1920s, and it remains, you know. Yeah, I remember that. I remember yeah. using them back in the 20s. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to mention that. No, no, right, okay, we don't want to go there. But <laughs> Mary, tell me a little yeah. bit. Tell, give me some more features of the EM5 Mark II, because that's really what we're here to talk yeah, about. Yeah, let's talk about a couple of the big upgrades that people are going to be really interested in talking about. So video is, is a huge thing. We've talked about um, how everyone who's doing photo is also doing video these days. Right. So um, we're really happy to kind of be able to bring some really pro kind of features down into this level of camera. So right. you know, even if you're kind of new to video, you're more of an enthusiast maybe, um, or even just a, a mom kind of shooting the kids on the sports field, you're going to be able to get really super smooth video quality handheld. Um, of course, it's got all those things that people are looking for, like variable frame rate, you're at um, 24, 25, 30, 50, and 60. Um, and that five axis image stabilization that we were talking about is really important here because it's what allows for that smooth handheld video. So you're not going to be using big stabilization rigs. Um, you're not going to be using, you know, gyro cams, things like that. Um, you can just shoot it all kind of handheld. So a couple things that support that. One, new very angle screen. So that's awesome for doing video. You can right. make sure you're not getting any reflections on it. Um, Two, feels super good in your hand. So, you know, I can just imagine kind of tracking my son, going down the soccer field, just like that. Thank you. Um, we want to take your picture. They, don't, the interface, they don't want to take mine. <laughs> and the <laughs> interface is so easy to use. Right. So we have a couple of things. Um, one of the nice things that <coughs> not using a mirror box in our cameras allows us to do is to have this live view of what we're shooting. Um, so one of the cool things about that is that right from the camera, I can go into... Can I flip it around? Can you guys see it then if I do yeah. that? Yeah, just that hold works. it a little forward yeah. there. Okay, so. so now you can right. see right on the camera, I'm, I switched into the video interface. Um, you can see everybody there right in the front. So there's a couple of different things that I can change right from the screen, and I'm going to have a hard time seeing it from here. But you can switch things like your focus point just by touching the screen. You can go into... Um, Let's focus on Sean. Sean, don't do anything wrong. There we go, right? We're you focusing on Sean. I'm doing it. 
Cool. So even while yeah. the video is recording, you can have control over those things. You can add different artifacts right while your video is recording, all by using that really simple touch interface. Um, obviously, you have direct control of all your frame rates, um, of your different um, compressions, things like that. One of the things that for me was really, really exciting about this camera, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this feature, and I'm going to let you expand upon it a little bit. And if you notice, what I did was I, I took off that that big lens that you have on there. One of you guys get, can you guys, one of you guys get me a, another camera? I want to sort of compare a little bit of a size to this. So my, my personal favorite kind of photography is street photography. Mm -hmm. And I love to walk around with a camera, you know, on me and I want to look very uh, GQ. So I don't really like big objects attached to me. And I really want to point out sort of the compact size. This is a pretty standard DSLR, a phenomenal DSLR actually from Nikon. It's a D5300, right? It's their latest one. And if you can sort of see the size comparison in the cameras, and we're talking about cameras that are in similar price range and so on. So for me, the size of the camera is really, really mm -hmm. a big factor. I mean, I was at CES uh, this past uh, January, and the whole show was about smaller, faster, lighter. Yeah. And so when you look at it from an industrial design perspective, I really think that Olympus is going uh, in the right direction. The other thing which makes this camera an amazing street camera and what really got me excited about it is the silent mode. Yes. So when you walk on the street and you want to take pictures of people or life situations, or even you're at an event, right? Obviously mm -hmm. for an event, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll get to that a little bit, you know, about whether you can use these cameras to do things like weddings and bar mitzvahs and so on. This camera shoots 11 frames per second dead silent. In the electronic shutter in mode. In the yes. electronic yes. shutter mode. And to me, I actually used that feature when I, get, when I took the camera. It was really like the first, the first thing that I did. Um, I put it in that. To me, it was actually amazing. It was actually dead silent, took 11 in-focus pictures, yeah. which to me was really, really, um, really fantastic. Um, and if you see, I took, that I took the camera, I took off that, what I would consider a big lens if you're going to walk around, and I put on the 17 millimeter prime lens. Mm -hmm. It's a, a 1.8 lens. It's an F1.8 lens. It's a, so I'm so shooting 34 yeah. millimeter, 35 millimeter yeah. equivalent, 1.8. Great in a compact, shooting. great, great uh, street shooting. It's just a great, lens, yeah. a great street shooting camera. Absolutely. So I threw this into that silent mode. So look, I'm going to hold it right up to my mic. <laughs> right. I'm at 11 frames per second in high speed. Do you hear anything? Wait. Can you hear it? It's not doing anything. It's not doing anything. She really did press the button, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> We can go back and review right. all the pictures of the behind the scenes staff here if you want to see them. But yeah, absolutely 100% silent. Great for things, you know. You're at your kid's dance recital. Maybe you're trying to do um, even photojournalism type applications where you don't want to kind of disrupt the scene that's going on. It's going to be a really great application for those in the of In the pro area, the biggest issue is when you're at houses of worship, mm -hmm. you know, and you're at an mm -hmm. event like that and you want to you want to you want to take a picture and, you know, the rabbi right. or the priest is, you know, he takes out the ruler and he <laughs> whacks your yeah. hand when you go click, click, click. That's true. That's right. And uh, this camera is totally, si totally silent. Absolutely. To me, that was a very, very um, exciting feature of the camera. Um, camera also has another really, really interesting feature. And that has to do with... A 40 megapixel. I heard something about that, right? Yeah, this is a 16 megapixel camera. It's a 16 megapixel. But I heard something camera, about 40 megapixels. Yep. It, it, it can it can actually render a 40 megapixel what we call right. high res shot. And as Mary mentioned earlier, yeah. you know, at the heart of a lot of, of a lot of the, the features and performance of this camera, are in fact the fi is in fact the five axis mm -hmm. image stabilizer, and right. that is at the uh, the foundation uh, of how that works. It right. It can actually shift the sensor so precisely so as to move it only in a one-half pixel width of movement. Does that eight times, and it kind of goes around the, uh, around the sensor. Right. Eight separate shots, composites them under a second, and well, actually about two seconds, and then makes it into not an interpolated file, but actually takes all that information and makes a 40-megapixel uh, JPEG shot. No, I assume when you do that, you have to put the camera on a tripod. It's got to be locked Absolutely. down. You don't want to have any movement, of course. Right, so if you really yeah. think about it, look at the size of the body, look at the size of the lenses, and you're producing, you're able to produce in the right circumstance a 40 megapixel image, which to me is really extraordinary. It's an extraordinary uh, situation. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I really want to talk a little bit about, because I know, you see, in a camera store, you get to hear a lot of customers talk about it. And one of the things that people always say is that the size of the sensor matters. Right, and this camera has a micro four-third sensor, which you know is 
a, considered a smaller size sensor, mm -hmm. particularly for an interchangeable lens camera. And so then the question is really, how does this camera do in low light and what kind of image quality uh, does this produce? Either of you want to talk about that a little bit? I'm very, very pleased with the image quality that we get out of our camera with the 16 megapixel sensor and the TruePix 7 engine, which of course is, is a huge part of it. You know, we've always been talking about image quality being comprised of three things, lens, engine, and right. sensor. Uh, we're actually adding a fourth element to that, to that equation now, which is actually the image stabilizer. Because if you think about it, for any type of photographer, to have the image stabilization, to have five steps of, of effectiveness is, is, is huge in terms of the image quality you're going to get. So uh, not just in bright light, but in low light or night scene photography, or when you don't have a fast lens, you're going to be able to get really good crisp shots. I mean, really down to a quarter of a second handheld. See... I've used the cameras practically, right, in real life, and I find that one of the big advantages, you, you know, when you buy, when you have a DSLR, fast lenses are very expensive, very big, and a lot of times you don't use them. In this case, you're sitting there with, this is a 45 millimeter 1.8, look at the size of the lens, so you have a fast lens, and that really, that really sometimes can compensate for the smaller sensor in low light, it really can, because you're walking around with faster glass. But in reality, I've given Olympus cameras. I've actually given them to people that use full frame Nikon and Canon DSLRs. And I will tell you that when they take the camera, the size and the portability more than overcomes those situations where you're in very, very low light. And they end up using them. And the people who, who play with raw files have told me that the raw files coming out of this camera are phenomenal. I've heard that over and over again. I personally shoot JPEG. I'm too busy. I don't have time <laughs> to play yeah. with my images. Your yeah. JPEG engine is great. Everybody knows that. But really, the raw files that come out of the camera. And one of the things we did was we took this pretty intricate scene. You guys took this, right? And we printed this here at the Unique Photo Photo Lab. If you go on uniquephoto.com, you'll be able to get a print right like this, right? 15 minutes? Really? I think Mary took we did that shot. You got you that. Guys I did not take yeah. that oh. shot. You did not take that shot. Green forest. Yeah. Oh. Can't take credit. Well, this for isn't it, out your backyard. <laughs> this isn't in your backyard. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> right. Yeah. There we go. All right. You can take a look. So that's an image that came out of what is it? 16 by 20, right? 20 by 20 by 20. It's 24 by 18, yeah. right? A 24 by 18 image that came out of what people call a small sensor. And mm -hmm. you can see, and this is not exactly a bright light, you know, on the nope. beach shot. I mean, this is a very, very intricate shot. It's a little bit hard to convey. I hope you're yeah. able to see it. A lot but of the shadow detail, detail. A lot of shadow yeah. detail. It's all Absolutely. really there. I mean, to me, this is really where the future of photography mm -hmm. is going. I mean, that's really why we, we titled the segment like that. Cameras yeah. getting smaller, lighter, faster, and, s and so on. Absolutely. Let's talk about a few more uh, features of the camera. Give, give me, tell me something else. Like if, I, if I'm coming to buy that camera, okay, I know that. Give me something else that we don't know. I know it's a tough question to do. Tell me about it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one of the cool things that everyone really loves, so kind of our heritage in going back to this micro four thirds compact system cameras, um, kind of really started with pen and kind of the EP1. And something that people were maybe missing a little bit was that electronic viewfinder or any viewfinder for that matter. Great. So um, there's some differences between an optical viewfinder and an electronic viewfinder. So one of the really cool things is that you're seeing a live preview of the actual shot that you're going to get. So if you've made any changes to your white balance, your um, exposure compensation, you've applied an art filter, you've changed your aspect ratio, all of those things are going to be visible in your electronic viewfinder. Very high resolution, lots of detail. You have almost 100% field of view within the viewfinder. Um, adaptive brightness technology. So you're, if you're out in that bright sunlight, you're still going to be able to kind of compose all of that at eye level for people who are Do used to Do we know the tech that. specs on the, um, on the viewfinder? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it, it actually has come up to the same level our, of our EM1 flagship viewfinder in terms of the spec. It's a 0.7 2x magnification right. in 35 millimeter terms. So I mean, you're in really pro territory there in terms of the magnification, and it's a 2.36 million dot um, LCD that's in that guy. Right. I was highly impressed when I looked through that viewfinder, mm -hmm. and to me, like you said, in bright sunlight, how many times have you had to review a picture in right. bright sunlight? Right. Sometimes the review is as important as actually capturing the shot. You know, digital Absolutely. photography. You want to see you're in bright light, you can't really do it. Absolutely. Yeah. So one of the nice things, too, is that, if I can turn this back on here, um, it switches automatically when you put your eye up to the sensor. So did you see it changed from the screen 
to No, it doesn't it doesn't because probably really you work. have to turn it around. It's probably uh, smart. It's smart. It's smart, it's smart enough. It it's, knew not to do, do it, it right, while we're on uh, here. Right. But the nice thing is I put it right up to my eye. Yeah. It's got an eye yeah. sensor. It it's changes from the screen yes. right to the viewfinder. So that's even good for reviewing the pictures when you're outside Absol too when sometimes you get that glare from sunlight. That's right. And you know, it's funny because you you sort of talk about it in terms of how it compares to a professional camera. And I really, really love the cameras in this price range, right? This camera is gonna be $1,099. That's yes. gonna be the price right. for a body when it comes out. I love the cameras in this price range because it's a very, very competitive area. Mm -hmm. All the vendors have cameras in that range and, and what's really good for the consumer is that it means the cameras are really, really good. So what are you always trying to do? You're trying to get as many professional features into that camera. And I'm gonna wager that a professional who uses that camera is gonna be really, really happy with it. I, th I think you're going to win that bet. Right, you yeah. know that's going to yes. be the, you know that's going to be the yes. be the case. I also see that you brought a little flash unit and you brought a a, a power pack and tell tell me a little Absolutely. bit about those. This is uh, our new FLLM3 strobe. That's another one. That's I should make you say that with the camera description. <laughs> I can do that one, th I think, twice, twice fast. Th I can maybe, okay. maybe get it out right. there. But and there's <laughs> a hot shoe on the camera, right? <laughs> yes. And what's significant about this one, uh, what's new, is that actually it's actually our first bundled flash in, an, in the OMD family that's weatherproof. So this is swivel. It's bounce, but it's also weatherproof. So again, it supports shooting. And right. You know, you could be out in the pouring rain. It, 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 right. It supports a weatherproof yep. camera. It's yep. not Absolutely. very good to have a weatherproof mm -hmm. camera and not have a weatherproof flash. Exactly. Obviously, it's got a guide number of nine at ISO 100, so it's got reasonable power to okay. it. Okay. And it's actually only compatible at this time with this camera. Okay. Because it's it's pretty slick. It's actually powered through an additional contact that you'll now see. There's actually four, looks like four TTL right. contacts. That fourth one is actually to power So that flash, flash is only good on the EM5 Mark II? Correct. At this time. Okay, yep. great. And, and tell me a little bit about the battery grip. Sure. Uh, Either way. Okay. Go. So it's a two-piece battery grip. Cool thing is if you don't need the extra power, maybe you don't want that kind of the bulkiness of it. We always want more power. Um, you can just use this grip, which is, you know, it's got yeah. that nice firm hold on it. I'll twist it on while we do it. Um, it's got an extra um, dial and shutter button there on the front so that you can do, um, you don't have to kind of stretch right. your finger backwards. Once again, a professional feature going Absolutely. onto the camera, particularly if you put a lens Absolutely. like this on the camera, yeah. really having that grip is really going to be helpful Absolutely. for so you. Absolutely, so you can see kind of how it adds it. to that yeah. like That's L shape. It's really good in your hand. You've got this extra thumb pad here to yeah, kind of Yeah, I, I want everybody to see that thumb grip because to me, that's really, really. That's actually been bumped out since right, the original right? M5. You can so see, you can I can. It's very really easy to hold the camera like that. But what's cool about this grip is that you have headphone support on it. So for anyone who's doing video, you know, not having it in the body itself kind of keeps it light and compact. Right. But if you are somebody that's going to be doing video and wants that feature, it's a really easy add-on to, to be able to get that right. um, headphone. I just there. love the way you guys engineer out the camera. So you know, Olympus Thanks. is really, really. Um, a fabulous engineering company. We're really thrilled to have them in the store. We're really excited about selling this camera. I want to thank you guys for coming today. Thanks yes. for having us. I want to thank Olympus for uh, supporting us at the store. Uh, please go to our website at uniquephoto.com uh, and check out this event. Uh, we have all of our live events on the website. Uh, please feel free to tweet about this event at hashtag UEventLive. Uh, please follow us on our social media. I'm a big social media guy myself. I promise I'll retweet you, follow in all sorts of things. So will Unique Photo. We're at Unique Photo on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And I am at M Sweetwood everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook also. We like to play out on social media. We hope to see you at our next U Event Live. And everybody have a great and happy Friday and weekend. Yes. Thank you, Matt.